and we are live okay so yeah I decided to come and do a little bit of a more technical stream it's uh, I haven't picked up on this in a while now um, let me just close here something okay. and here we are and I have made so many changes to it in the recent uh, times um, because I was traveling quite a lot so I didn't stream but I still um, decided to develop and continue on with the work even though I wasn't doing it live um, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of a summary and there are a lot of code changes to it um, so let's just dive into it so the main entry point to the library that we need to inject into the Firefox process didn't change that much um, apart from this addition that we'll get into a little bit later so let's just um, go on to the startup function so previously the startup function was the one that was uh, doing the hooks so I generalized that function into this apply detour function which basically uh, what it does is it gets the module address so we have a function that we want to hook uh, with a specific name that is part of a specific module or provided by a specific module uh, in this case um, it it's uh, on the case of this call it is kernel 32.dll and then the function is the create process um, w which is the wide version or the unicode version of the function um, so it gets the module address and i for the api of the library i followed this standard of the functions always return a boolean for success or failure and the result is always uh, passed by reference so this is a custom function instead of using the usual um, windows provided get module handle function i implemented my own function because why not um, this is done for many reasons most of it is done on malware for example to be a little bit more stealthy um, this is not the case we are not i'm not aiming to be stealthy but it was just a good exercise uh, to do so so the first step to get um, uh, the address uh, of a module loaded in a windows process is to actually um, get it from the GS segment in case of and we are talking about uh, 64 bits on 32 bits is another segment I don't remember is not the is it is the FS in Windows 32 is the FS segment but anyways on uh, 64 bits is the GS so we will read a uh, keyword so a um, 64 bit long uh, unsigned integer from uh, the offset 0 uh, or 60 in X and you see, if you see this uh, is um, basically an intrinsic which is uh, built by using uh, uh, this read GSD word um, macro which in the end it's just basically assembly so it creates uh, it uses the assembly um, facility of uh, GCC and other compilers as well to just put raw assembly into the into the code um, so 
it basically gets the process what is called in windows the process environment block which is basically a structure that specifies a lot of information about the running process of which uh, the module list is uh, one of the data there are provided by it so basically we get the address uh, to this structure a pointer to this structure we validate if it's null or not whatever and then we start to get the what they call the pab loader data which is the one that contains uh, the loaded modules in memory the libraries aka dlls so we get the first entry and if nobody mocked with the first entry we just go on and actually get uh, the module entry on that list. This is a double linked list. So if we look at the playlist entry uh, definition, is basically, um, as you can see here, a double linked list. And basically we have to iterate over this list um, to get the module entries and then you compare the module entries names which is defined by this field here with the module name that we want and if we do find it then our result so the value that we passed uh, by reference gets attributed the actual module uh, address and then we iterate until there's no more entries or we iterate while the entry is not null and we haven't reached the, the first element of the li double linked list so that's the the first function that i uh, changed and created the second one is also the get exported uh, symbol uh, so this replaces basically get proc address, which is provided by Windows. To do that is the same way I did uh, to hook uh, the functions from the export table of the portable executable uh, file format, so from the module itself. Um, let me just think the music is a little bit too loud okay so basically it giving a module address or an address for a portable executable mapped in memory either it's a DLL or an executable dot exe or a dot DLL doesn't really matter given the symbol name so the export function or symbol that we want to get and then it stores that address if found in this uh, value that is passed by reference or in this variable that is passed by reference so the first thing we have to do is convert the module address into uh, or cast not convert cast to a uh, image dos adder uh, structure we do some validation we get the empty headers uh, or empty header from it normals portable executable parsing stuff um do some more validations as well and then we go on to the export directory of that specific portable executable we get some more um offsets or uh, yeah some offsets make them into pointers uh, and for the exported symbol names and exported symbol addresses then we iterate over every single name. We compare the name with the function that we or the symbol that we want to get the address for. Once it's found, then we just calculate uh, the address based on the offset for that specific symbol. And if everything is okay, if that happens, then we return true. So this is not uh, any doubts you can always put in on the chat and uh, I'll try to explain better or explain, respond. Um, 
so so basically if we say we want the create process w function from the kernel 32 module um, and we want to hook that function with this specific address and then return the results in this function or in this structure so let's have a look at this structure so this structure is basically it will describe uh, a detour a detour that we have applied to a specific function a hook that we apply to a specific function and it's used afterwards to actually be able to remove that same detour so basically it has the module address where the function uh, of the original function the original address of the the function the address that was who that uh, of the function of the um, hook function so the the function to where the execution of code is diverted to or detoured to and then the trampoline address i'll explain this in a little bit more detail uh, further down the road because this is a little bit uh, uh, interesting why we need a trampoline uh, on windows 64 and not so much on windows 32 Uh, I'm, when I say 64 slash 32, I always mean bits. 32 bits and 64 bits. That's the difference. Um, so, so after having that information, having the module address and the actual function address, what we need to do is to get the bounds for the section that contains the function address that we want to hook okay so to do that and i'll explain and then you, it's going to be further it's going to be clear why we need that is that basically what we need to do same thing as for the exported symbol just initial parsing of the pe headers portable executable headers then instead we're gonna get the section header and then we'll iterate over the section headers so it's basically if you think about uh, in terms of memory layout is a bunch of um, sequence of uh, a specific structure which is the image uh, section header in memory that we can just iterate based on its size so we have an, uh, a number of sections. We have the starting uh, address for where those sections are or those headers are written in memory um, or in the, the, the file structure of the P header. Um, and then we just iterate over it by uh, always adding uh, the size of the the structure of the image header structure and basically we then can get the lower and upper address of that section by getting the virtual address and the virtual size of the section and then we check based on the address that we want to find so the, the we check if those bound if the address is in those bounds and if it is then it returns the bounds so basically why do we need this why do we need to find the exact section where the function that we want to hook resides and why do we need the bounds for that section the lower starting address and the upper slash ending address well, we need that because we will need to write a trampoline. And it's nice to write trampolines on sections that are supposed to have executable code. Once again, I'm not doing this specifically for stealth, but if I wanted to be stealth as much as possible, that's what I would do. And, but why do we need to write a trampoline? Well, so in Windows 32 bits, you at, you can map at a maximum four gigs of memory. It's a little bit less, but let's round it up for to four gigs of memory. So usually the memory space is a lot for the processes is a lot more condensed. 
and a lot smaller. So when you want to hook a function on a specific uh, module, usually the portable executable header, so if I come here, where is it? Uh, this one is a good example. When we want to get the export table where it contains the exported symbols of a module, it has a bunch of offsets, which is the export addresses. They are a bunch of offsets that then can be converted into a pointer, into an actual location in memory by using the base address of the function, of the module. Uh, maybe uh, it's easier if I... Do we have... Um, uh, accessories... Vim? No, text editor. Maybe it's easier to visualize it like this. So, let's go with the 32 bits example. Um, so, let's assume this is the memory mapping. We have this as the memory mapping. And here we have... We have um, starting here, we have our target module. And oh, by the way, assume that the memory mapping is like this. So this is um, lower memory addresses. And these are higher memory addresses, so it moves, it basically moves this way. It grows this way. So we have our target module here, right? It's in this uh, region of memory, right? And then, like, further down, we have our library. And we know that the export addresses on the portable executable adders are represented by a a eight uh, it is at eight bits right yeah eight bits no not eight bits sorry eight bytes basically 32 bits um, unsigned integer right so this is the export address offsets are represented by this right so this is what we know So what happens is, when I want to hook a function, let's imagine, imagine the function is somewhere in here, in this region of memory, and we want to hook that function, this is the original function that we want to hook, is here, let's put a no, that's where the original function is, and we want to hook that function into a, a function on our library, Rep around this area of memory. So, if we want to do that, basically what we do is on the export uh, table, we change the address offset for this specific function, the O function, the original function. And what happens in 32 bits is that the space that goes from here, from the original function to the function in our library actually more specifically, sorry from the beginning of the target module to our library, so the space, the, the size of the memory in between now and then is always less than 32 bits 
right? This means that when we calculate the offset from the beginning of the target module to this function, the calculated offset still fits on the export table address offset. So it doesn't overflow, which is great. So no matter where this library is located or this function is located in the memory space of the process, by the way, I'm gonna call it we never overflow the offset. So it always gets calculated and uh, it's always po is always uh, valid. So switch to 64 bits. So in 64 bits, due to, um, I would say, I don't know, I guess, they didn't need to change it for normal conditions and use cases they didn't need to change it so they never it's, and to also maintain backwards compatibility um, they didn't change it so while you have 64 bits which means that the memory space of the the process is a lot bigger Also, the offsets are still the same. They are still, even though you are in 64 bits, they are still represented by 8 bytes, meaning 32 bits. So, if your library is loaded somewhere outside or too far away, which is most of the cases. This will definitely be bigger than 32 bits. So what happens is that that D word, that uh, unsigned, that uh, 32 bits unsigned integer, aka double word, aka D word, gets overflown. And then you have problems because when it's calculating the offsets, or calculating the actual addresses it basically points to invalid regions in memory so how can you how can you solve this how can you deal with this so the easiest way to deal with this is to basically instead of directly pointing this the uh, offset into your detour function you point it into some region of memory of the target module so this offset is always less guaranteed to be always less than 32 bits because let's be serious like uh, there's no dll that is uh, bigger than 4 gigs and if it is then you have a lot more problems than uh, <laughs> than uh, some overflow offsets um, so this will always be less than 32 bits and then this t this trampoline will actually have instructions to then jump to the address of your actual detour so this way you're not overflowing the the export address offsets and you are guaranteeing that with the jump um, how do you call it is not um, absolute off uh, absolute with the uh, jump for an absolute address that you can go way further than the than 32 bits so one of the things that also happened on uh, 64 bits and we'll see it a little bit further now uh further forward in time is that you cannot do simply this um 
easy one. You, you simply can't do this. You cannot put um, an absolute address. So what we have to do is basically move into a registry the address for our detour function. And then we jump. So we use the jump uh, to a register value. So this is basically our trampoline, and this is is in a um, 64 bits assembly, is 12 bytes long, basically this assembly. So this is the reason why we need trampolines um, for 64 bits and not necessarily for 32 bits because the um, the offset is always guaranteed or the offset value is always guaranteed to fit in it because it's always less than 32 bits while in 64 that doesn't happen so oh, where was I? so that's why we need then to write a trampoline and that's why we need to find an area of the target module uh, where we can write that trampoline so to guarantee that is less than 32 bits um, so let's have a look at the so we have the bounds for the section that contains the exact ex executable code for our target for the function that we want to detour or hook so if we look at the right trampoline it's very simple basically we try to find some empty space on the in the bounds of uh, in between the bounds of that section so we basically try to find a pattern of c c c c c c c c in a, in a x which basically translates to the um, int tree instruction so this int tree instruction is basically um, an interrupt so it's the instruction that is used to signal to a debugger or to signal to the process that it needs to handle control to a debugger so that the debugger breaks on that specific instruction and so I implemented this uh, find pattern function. It's quite simple. So you specify a pattern that you want to uh, search for. You specify a mask. So, for example, if I wanted to ensure that the first byte was actually CCC, but then the second byte I didn't really care, then I would just do something like this. So it's basically wildcard bytes. It allows you to specify wildcard bytes. Um, and basically it goes from the start address up to the end address. And then for each one of, of those, uh, it increments one by one, one byte at each time. And it search for, for a pattern. And if he does find a pattern, then it returns. Um, actually, this is not cave address. This should be pattern address. Because before this function was a little bit different, but I found other uses for. Uh, uh, where is it? I, there was another one. This one. Um, so yeah, so it just searches on the that specific memory region uh, bound by these two values for a specific sequence of bytes uh, and returns the address of that sequence of bytes. Um, we'll also see why I'm using uh, 
when we switch to Windows and while I'm debugging because I did all this I did a bunch of changes but I wanna I haven't done much testing so I'll test again that this is properly working all of this is properly working I'll show you why um, int why we are searching for int um, tree instructions then basically um, if we do find uh, an area of memory that has this pattern. We change its protection level to be uh, page execute read write. And then we start to manually write the instructions for the CPU, the assembly code. So what we do is basically the first one we is, is uh, the um, code for move a specific value into racks into the 64-bit uh, registry called racks uh, do note that the assembly uh, in bytes is actually this but we are writing it in reverse order because this is uh, x86 64 bits is a little endian uh, machine so things have to be are in memory in a different order um, then we basically uh, we move two bytes ahead uh, and we write the destination address so it will be the address of our hook function and then we write the jump racks instruction which is FFE0 so this is two bytes long, so we write the destination address two bytes in front. Two bytes plus eight bytes, that's um, six. Actually, I was explaining something wrong to you guys, I think. And this is not eight bytes, this is four bytes. I got it wrong. Four bytes, which is 32 bits. Um, and then the destination address is 8 bytes, so we have to write the jump racks instruction 10 bytes in front, and in total that's 12 bytes. Um, so that's why then we also uh, are searching for a 12 byte long pattern we are only changing the protection well the, not really because this only ch this changes of the entire pa memory page but anyways we are only targeting these 12 uh, bytes on this specific address um, and i already seeing a bug here so this should be cave address I don't know if this was working properly probably not so this wouldn't work properly for sure because the virtual protection would fall, uh, fail or would be successful but then this would uh, throw a segmentation fault um, or um, access fault no an access fault not segmentation an access fault um, yeah, and then basically try to restore uh, the memory protection to the old original protection after we written it, after we written everything that we needed to write. And if it fails, we don't really care. Uh, so as long as we are able to write, it's all good. Okay. Um, so after writing the trampoline, the last thing we need to do is basically detour the exported symbol which is basically more of the same portable executable uh, parsing uh, getting the export uh, table and then changing the offset uh, of the target function uh, of, uh, in the export table be wary that for that change we also need to change the memory protection 
and then we calculate the offset by using instead of make pointer make delta uh, macro which I also uh, explained on previous streams and after that we all done we just need to return the results into the supplied uh, detour uh, structure if it does fail to detour the exported symbol it tries to erase the trampoline so if we go into the erase the trampoline is basically it searches for a pattern which is basically what we written here the jump or the move racks some address jump racks so you can see here is 48 b8 and then a bunch of zero 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 zeros because we don't really care what it is and you can see here in the mask that i only enforce that these first two bytes are this one and these first two bytes are these ones I need to verify that this is actually working because I'm not sure if the order... Sh I think this order is wrong. I think the order needs to be like this. But I need to double check. Anyways. Because we are we are verifying byte by byte so I we might need to change... Uh, I need to change this I think. And basically, this is only to double check that we are trying that what we are trying to erase as the trampoline uh, is valid. It's only just a validation. It's not actually searching the entire memory. It's just validating that that specific address plus uh, starting at that specific address plus twelve bytes afterwards is actually this. Um, and what we do is basically we just restore uh, the CCCCCs, which was what we replaced in the beginning. Um, I definitely need to double check this one. Uh, shall I put... What I'm gonna do is just to be sure when I'm debugging I don't miss it uh, or at least th that chance is reduced um, so and basically the remove deters uh, function is also calling the deter exported symbol but it basically has these addresses in reverse so it restores the it replaced the um, the trampoline address or the tramp the offset to the trampoline address by the offset to the original address and then erases the trampoline okay so that's the the changes for the hooking um, so once the function is hooked let's go for this one um, and when it's called we'll remember we were hooking the create process because we want to once firefox forks another process we want our library to still be injected on that uh, process. Uh, so what we do is on the hook create process, we change the creation flags for that process to contain the create suspended flag. We call the original function, so the non-deterred version, uh, deterred version of the function. And then we inject the library itself into that. Into that. 
process. So the inject self is basically it calls another function called inject other which needs a path to a specific library. In the inject self that path is this one and this one function going back to what I said in the beginning of the stream is given or is initialized by using this function the get module file name with the handle to the library itself and storing the result here so that's why we add I added this function here so I know where my library is being loaded from where this library is being loaded from um, so and the inject order is basically the code that we had uh, here on the injector using the create uh, remote thread um, method to inject libraries into Windows processes. Um, hey, what's happening? Okay, so it's the same thing. We use the, the functions that I defined, the get module address, the get exported symbol to get the kernel 32.dll address, the load library function address. We allocate memory in the target process to write the path to the library that we want to load. And then we uh, create a thread on this function, passing the address with the path as a parameter to that uh, function or thread and then uh, we wait for it to run and return true if uh, nothing else failed and that's it um, so these are the helper functions so the find pattern the get section bounds exported symbols get module address so are the macros. Uh, this macro is only used to avoid compiler warnings for functions uh, for uh, functions that I know the parameters are to be unused. It's not a problem. Um, and this function basically defines uh, if we need to, depending on where, where if the header is being used or not by the library itself whether the symbols are exported or imported because what i want to do further down the road is actually make the injector use the library and instead of having this code here i would be i would only or not this code having this in code here i would just use uh, the inject other uh, function Uh, so I think that is all what I'm going to do now is is show you I'm gonna debug it so uh, wait because I have changes so let's compile the header again or the library again let's launch the debugger So let's start with the injector. We run until the library is being injected. Then we attach to the Firefox process. We let it run. We let create remote thread do its thing. And you can see here our library TLS callbacks are starting. 
So what I'm going to do is set some breakpoints. The first one is not in fine pattern. Oh, it's, it was in the erase, right? Uh, where is it? Oh no, because it's no longer exported. Um, okay, I can search for find reference to the selected address. So exactly this one. So and I'm gonna knock this one out. Uh, so I set the breakpoint here. So this function, so this is the, um, where's the label? So this is the remove trampoline function. Um, so that's the first breakpoint that I want to set. The second one that I want to set is in here because I want to check, double check that this is working. And then we should be good. So just gonna let it run. Another callback breakpoint. Uh, this is the startup function. Oh, I can actually comment as well. I already had a breakpoint on it, but was still valid. Okay. So this is the startup function. And guess what? Which one this one is? <laughs> With the remove details. This is the cleanup function, clearly. So we can let it run because we had a breakpoint on the apply detour anyways so this is the first call to it so we're looking for a create process double in kernel 32 memory so let me just uh, so step is f7 just to be sure i'm not screwing up and then f8 is the step over right yeah. so we start f7 we step single step so the first thing it's going to do is try to get the kernel32 uh, DLL uh, address. So we jump over it. It succeeded because it returned true. And if you look at uh, follow in disassembler. No, go back. Which one is it? No, it should be... Should be this one? Yeah, it's this one, exactly. So you can see here that it actually was able to find the base address for the kernel32 DLL. You can see like here, kernel32.dll and you can see here that this is the start of a um, um, portable executable file. Actually, if we follow this in dump, you can see here this program. So it successfully found um, the kernel32.dll address, which is nice. So we move on. Now we want to get the address for the create process function. And we jump over it. It also succeeded. Let's see. Clearly, I'm doing this wrong. No, it should be this one. Because this one is the other's of the. Or maybe not. So this is the module address. 
this is the result and this one is the name so you have here the name of the function and the result is returned on here and you can see that is clearly pointing to the create process w function on the kernel32.tll so that's what we wanted um, so it should go ok now this is the get section bounds which also succeeds following dump Yeah, this is the offset. Oh, sorry, wrong. Um, yeah. What happened? So Rux RCX Oh but I already oh, okay. Uh, I already called the function. So why doesn't it show me what I want to see? Ah, oh, it does show. So basically, okay. So it found the the bounds for the section, and this is the lower bound. And this is to answer also the question of why were was I searching for interrupts? It's because, <clears throat> sorry. Um, nowadays on windows the spacing between functions on dll's is basically a bunch of interrupts it's not it's not even knobs or zeros it's just base simple ccc instructions so that's why the the pattern function is searching for this for these uh, instructions uh, which is interesting is why Ah, I see, because this is the end of the, the section. Yeah, indeed. So I understand now why... I wasn't understanding why it was showing this. It's because it's the end of the section of the... Um, and you can see here the section that we are looking at is the dot .text section, which is usually a section that contains executable code on on portable executable files. That's the name of the usual section to have code in. So this is working as well. Uh, where's my F7? Uh, then what do we need to do? So the next thing he's gonna do is write the trampoline. So this one we're gonna add a breakpoint here in case I screw up on it. I just run it. And this is the write trampoline function. So what it's doing is it's gonna try find the pattern as we've seen so you can see here the bbbs 
and if we delve into this stuff here uh, we would also see the CCCs um, because this is that the segment so following dump so this is the BBBs and this one should be the CCCs okay so the what would be the interrupt um, instruction in assembly so we then call find pattern and we're gonna run until return and it succeeded and the address for that should be here actually you can see it returned the address for the start of the section because the start of the section that contains the create process w function already has 12 bytes enough size or more than 12 bytes actually uh yeah more than 12 bytes of int tree instructions or ccc instructions so this succeeds it finds the pattern then what it does is change the um, memory protection for that area for that region it also succeeds returns on one in uh, racks we move on then this is basically changing um, what is in that in that uh, address space so it's basically where is it is basically doing these instructions here um, so if we look at the actual Uh, was it this one? Wait, what am I doing? Yeah, it's this one, yeah. It already started to change. So remember it was a bunch of CCCCCs. Now it has the 48B8, the address of our hook function, which clearly points to it. You can see here in the disassembler, the library, it's called library stub something. So if, uh, wait, it's not resolving. Following this disassembler, yeah. You can see here, this is exactly our create process uh, hook function. And you can see here with the inject self call. So if we single step again, or a little bit further down just before we restore the memory protection um, you can see here that it wrote or uh, trampoline okay now we jump and it succeeded so we can remove this breakpoint then we go on to deter the function uh, I don't want to go into this uh, one because I already covered it in a previous uh, stream so I'm gonna jump over this one but it also su succeeded so it's just gonna run so I'm gonna let it run so TLS callbacks for other DLLs Uh, bollocks. Um, so. 
let's just refresh this. So. Right, I'm not sure how many I'm gonna try to attach because there's a lot of more a lot more Firefox processes. I'm attached to which one currently? To AT Which is this one. There's a bunch of uh, Child Firefox processes. Let's see if we are seeing all of them. I think so. Let's see. I didn't. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to add breakpoints to the um, detour function. So I didn't see if it called. Um, yeah, my bad. Let's see if the module is loaded. Oh no 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 no. Okay. So Firefox. Cannot find it. Okay. Unsafe. Let's let's try because it's needed to start the process in safe mode or whatever. Okay. Let's see if it loaded the process. It loaded the library. Mm. Not seeing very promising results. Let's let's use search. Oh, there it is. Okay, so two of the processes is interesting, right? Because we have one, two, three, four, five Firefox processes. This one has it. This one has it. And the, so two have it. <laughs> but the other two don't or the other three don't which is something weird um, do i have process explorer i think i have process explorer installed i uh, just need to check uh no i don't I could could have swear that I had season internal tools installed. Apparently not. Um, 
Anyways, never too late. Swear. Anyways, doesn't matter. Explorer 64. Uh, where's Firefox? Oh, I closed it. Oh, not smart. Okay, let's launch it again. Yeah. They all have the same parent. It's interesting because uh, properties, and if we look, environment maybe? No. Oh. It doesn't show. How can I list the modules of this thing? Uh, I'm pretty sure we could show Sure, yeah. So, <sighs> so we have this one has it, and this one has it. So, it's interesting because. These processes might be created in another way other than the create process that way. Because the, this one has it, which I assume is the first one that we started. This one has it, which is potentially a second one. No, but this is interesting because it's the same. They are somewhat created in the, with the same parameters. So I don't understand why one has it and the other doesn't. Because they seem to be all parents of this one, so. It's a little bit weird. Hmm. Anyways, I think I'm going to ignore this for now and see if this isn't a problem. Uh, if it is, then I'll try to fix it. Otherwise, I'm just going to ignore it for now because this is a very Firefoxy uh, way of doing things. Um, yeah, I'm going to ignore it for now. I'm just going to do a small pause and I'll be back in a second.
Okay, I'm back. Um, so yeah, let's ignore that. Uh, but what I wanted to do um, is to um, check upon the. Um, Unloading process. What happened here? Anyways. Um, remove detour. Because it then calls remove trampoline. This is it. So if I okay, perfect. Assembly. Not. F7, moving on. So we pass on the pattern and all these sort of things. And then we get this. Do this. This code is a little bit too complex. As, huh. started this is only the fine pattern eh yeah but I need to so this is the comparison. So I want the uh, I want this comparison here. Yeah. Um. Seriously. What happened? Oh, come on. Something is not going well. So let's assemble an op, no operation. I need to get a, a more comfortable chair because my back is killing me. 
Um, F7. Now, and we go. Yes, we need to go into find pattern. And I put it here. So why didn't he break? Okay, let's go slowly. Do the comparison. It's not doing the comparison. Why is it not doing the comparison? To find pattern, huh? It's never doing the comparison. Why is it never doing the comparison? really weird But the mask is not new terminated. So sorry, I'm babbling a little bit. So my concern is that this string len because I think it's on this comparison that he's doing. Racks. Add fiance API32. Yeah, because it's removing the create process as user w hook. Okay, fair enough. Is it doing where is this comparison coming from Increments the index by one. But it never does this. Uh. 
But the question then, is it erasing? Okay, let's run until return see if it fails. Yeah, it fails. It does fail. So what values are we passing down this thing? This is the mask, which is correct, and this is the what we are expecting, and this should be the address, right? Which is correct. So if I follow this in dump. It's correct. 48B8 FFE0. Not going crazy, am I? Because we are reading one by one. So in memory for 8 b8 but i don't understand why it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't does it doesn't do this comparison Start address and address. Call if you go to the remove trampoline, erase trampoline, trampoline address plus twelve. Where is the plus twelve? There's no plus 12, oh. No, this is just layers and stuff. There's no add. Oh, remove trampoline, I called it. Remove trampoline should be raised trampoline, but doesn't matter. Oh, 
Oh, this is Rax, so forget about. Exactly the address is correct. Oh, this is really weird. This is really weird. Why isn't it? Mm. Because it's not, it's doing the fine pattern. Okay, we still have to call this function once again. Yeah, so let's see what it brings for create process w. RCX. So if we follow in dumb, that's the the pattern. Then if you follow RDX, where's RDX here? That's okay. That's the mask. That's the mask. Correct. R8. Where are you? R8. So it's correct. The start address is this one. So if we're following this assembler is this one. Perfect. And the end address is this one, which is after the payload, which is correct. So it's it, it does calculate somehow. Mm, sorry, my bad. What am I doing? Here it is. That's R9. So what file does R9 have? That's a layer. layer. Okay. Okay, that's where it's calculating it. Interesting. Okay, but the value is correct, so it doesn't really matter what he's doing. Uh, that's why I wasn't able to see it, but it's here. That's the plus 12. Okay, fair enough. Um, so we have all the variables, right? Uh, can I have a label to this thing? No, this is a comment. I don't wanna. I wanna create a variable or something. That's something that you can do on. I don't wanna add an argument. Well, anyways, doesn't matter. So we get uh, 18, which is the mask. So this string, string length needs to return 12, right? Yeah, it returned 12. possible that I screwed up to create um, where's the main no, but 
but he succeeds anyways. Because this function is never called. You know, it's always a good time for Slav Polka. Anyways. Uh, okay, move racks. RB20, which is the start address. And then we start on RBP8, the value. Comparing if it's the end, okay. Fair enough, it's not the end. That's the CCC thing. So it's RB18. Twelve. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is the counter. That's index basically I think. Or current address. Yeah, because it's zero. It never calls it. You, you just walk right out the door. Don't want to do this mm. anymore. Now I'm Seems like a pattern. You, Maybe I'm too tired already, but this is really weird. Because <sighs> for this one is is working. Is it because of having null terminate? No, because I'm treating it as a... So current address equals start address, then the current address needs to be less than a end address and then we increment one by one. The index is always reset to zero. X needs to be less than length. The current address plus the length 
needs to always be less than and oh I see I see what I'm doing here I'm doing wrong ah. because this will fail this 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 will always fail <clears throat> and this is a use case where it fails So the current address needs to be always smaller than end address, which is I understand why. No, this is failing because this this here will always be false in the case of um, the pattern. So the sorry, the mask length is twelve, and the start address and the end address is the start address plus twelve. So current address plus length is not less than end address. Is exactly equal to the end address. So this needs to be current address plus length smaller or equal to end address. Otherwise, it will never work. Or in this specific use case, that the address space that we are looking for is a, the exact same size as the the pattern. So. Um. <sighs> okay, so I found the bug, which is nice. So, uh, do, 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 do. also add an interrupt here. Now, let's try with the remove address. Let's run until the create remote thread. Uh, now we attach to Firefox. Beautiful Firefox. And just let it run. is also writing the
Okay. I'm just verifying if the um, trampoline for create process as user w is also properly done. There's not a single day that passes without you on my mind, not even one minute. So I'm just gonna jump over this one. He also apparently detoured the thing properly. F9. So, uh, oh. so uh, where's the sample? <sighs> okay. So let's see what is the result for find pattern in this one this time around. Yep, succeeded. So it was that it was that condition. I was failing on that specific use case. So now So after that, and if we follow, no, sorry. Hmm? No, it is this one, no? this one yeah so the trampoline is now back to being a bunch of interrupts yeah it's working oh. perfect it's working so I'll well, fix the bug, ensure that everything is working apart from it not injecting to all the child processes, which is so weird. Works for one but not for the other, so it's It's been streaming for one hour and fifty, so I'm just gonna spend the last um ten minutes more or less trying to figure out why um it doesn't actually catch all the processes um, because I'm not gonna dive into hooking the registry functions now it's way too late in the evening now well not evening anymore night so let me see so let's Let's disable registry. Let's only have these ones. Create process W. Create process as user. Uh, but it's interesting because here he also only sees one process, but there's five other um, Firefox processes. This is so interesting. Uh, can I see the process ID? Uh, process ID. 
so you can see the 5928 and but the last three the other three you cannot see it this is really interesting and it is calling um, so let's see so load libraries great process w then create process as user second create process as user third create and fourth create process as user it is interesting very interesting quick change very quick change um, main because this one doesn't have any call yeah it's only this one it's only the pro the main process so who create process as user Zambi okay or something like this so let's see how many times this is very uh, cheeky way of doing things but uh, I don't want to much spend much more time um, so let's put it here high one zero high twos zero why is that Oh man, this is really interesting. So it only catches the create process normal. It doesn't catch this. Why so? Because the hood is Is apparently great. Did I write? Did I write the function name right? No, because the hook works. Create process as user. And it's create process as user w. And it's from the Firefox process. This one is coming from shul.dll, this call, but this call is coming from firefox.exe. Is there any difference? Is it an art coded thing? Nah. 
because it's, it's not calling it. Let's double check. Um, Forgot to uh, forgot to remove um, forgot to remove this here. I might have to change the import table, which is boom. It doesn't call the hook. So let's see where this is being called from. So this is being called from here, so let's follow in this assembler. Oh, he's just calling the same... yeah? Oh, this is so weird. Okay, uh, let's... Following this assembler, so if we go to the start of this section, what do we have? A trampoline <laughs> to the function, to the debug, to the um, to the hook function. So the trampoline is being written and everything. So I believe everything is supposed to be as it is. The difference is that probably the export was already resolved once my library is injected to Firefox and then that's game over. Might be just that, right? It might just be that. And that's why it's not catching... Ah um... oh, man, that sucks. That really doesn't work right. If that is the case, 
if it's catching um, if it's uh, hooking the function too late uh, if it's changing the export address table too late because it's interesting because the create process use uh, create process w function is called by uh, xul.dll and not by Firefox and that works but the one that is called by Firefox doesn't work even though we, it seems that the export table and everything is working properly um, yeah Yeah, I really don't want to use because uh, the other only other option is to The assembly code FF15 and then the address or the off well this data segment mm. this really sucks Because I can change the... For this function is not a problem to change. Let's see the create process user. Or oh, the create process double, sorry. Because for, for this function here, it's not a problem to replace these bytes, um, figure out the length of these instructions, consume enough instructions for us to put our own, to put the trampoline here, to jump to our original function, our hook function, and then create a specific payload for when you want to call the original function that sets that runs these instructions before jumping here for example I don't know but um, that's not really practical in every case what I'm starting to see that um, you don't have much of an option yeah create process is the same Because we don't really want to, well, can change. Jump, keyword. Yeah, that's also a relative jump. So I have to change this. Uh, I can change this jump, this relative jump. And I can also add here. Yeah, the problem is that this cannot be a relative jump, can it? Because the library is uh, way, way. <coughs> Interesting. Okay, I think I'll leave this for um, the next stream on this. Um, it's an interesting challenge. 
I'll uh, think a little bit more on it. Um, in any case, thank you very much for watching and uh, talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye bye.